Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh and today we are going to do the MFE, the functions of MFE and its objectives, right? So let's start. Before starting, let me tell you that we have started the NISM 5A uh, mutual fund distributor test series. Uh, English mein hai. Uh, Hindi mein bhi jaldi launch karenge. 10 full length test uh, and then we are going to provide the notes in the PDF format. Exact summary sheets bana diya humne. In-depth ex explanation of all the questions, you can complete this course within, I think, like uh, three days. Within three days, uh, you can complete this course plus the test series, right? So just go to learn.bankexamstudy.com or install the Bank Exams Today mobile application. Uh, course link in the description. Mein dal diya. All the links are available in the description. So let's start, students. Uh, what is MFI? First of all, you have to know full form of What is the full form of MFI? It is Association of Mutual Funds in India. Association of Mutual Funds in India. As uh, ICAI, it is the Association of uh, uh, Chartered Accountants. The Chartered Accountants are the members of the ICAI. Uh, similarly, uh, the asset management companies, the AMCs, they are, AMCs are the member of MFI. Okay. So it is a kind of industry body which represents the mutual fund industry. So M what is uh, MFI? It is industry body that represents the mutual fund industries to RBI, to SEBI, to all the government organizations. So it represents the mutual fund industry. Okay. So as the CII uh, represents the overall industry and NASCOM represents the IT and BPO industry. Similarly, the MFI hai, it represents the mutual fund industry. It represents to the RBI to uh, SEBI and all, right? MFI is not an SRO. So what is an SRO? Self-regulatory organization. MFI is not a self-regulatory organization. As for ICAI, the association of chartered accountants they can punish their members they can punish they have their own regulations they have their own regulations so they have their own regulations but mfi is not an sro this is an way this is a very important question mfi is not an sro uh, the statutory uh, regulatory body set up by the government of uh, the government only laid down the broad policy framework so uh, MFI is not an SRO, but ICAI, uh, these, uh, you know, organizations, these are SROs. So the uh, MFI doesn't have its own regulations. It doesn't have an, a proper act. Maybe in future, there will be a proper regulation. Uh, there will be a proper act for the MFI, right? It will be an SRO in future. But as of now, MFI is not an SRO. Okay. What are the objectives of, uh, objectives of setting up MFI? The very first and the most important one, uh, it represents the mutual fund industry to the SEBI. It, it represents the mutual fund industry to the RBI, to the SEBI to the RBI, SEBI and the government of and other bodies, government of Indian other bodies. And it brings and it it takes the all the concerns of mutual fund industry to the SEBI, to the Reserve Bank of India and to the government. Jo bhi dikkate hoti hai mutual fund industry mein, uh, the MFI takes, uh, jo sabse feedback leta and takes or uh, take all these, uh, you know, the, all that feedback and all the concerns to the SEBI, to uh, RBI, to government of India, right? So these two points are really important. So one of the most important objective uh, of um, MFI is to maintain, define and maintain. So this one is important. Define and maintain high professional and ethical standards in all areas of operation of mutual fund industry. So uh, the MFI, it defines the ethical standards, the ethics. It defines a code of conduct. The code of conduct of AMCs and the distributors. <clears throat> okay. And MFI recommend and promote the best business practices and code of conduct to be followed by its members and other entities engaged in the activities of uh, activities in mutual fund industries. So all the distributors, all the, you know, uh, AMCs, the MFI, it defines the code of conduct and it uh, it maintains the high professional and ethical standards in all areas of uh, mutual fund industry. Okay. 
so and also uh it undertakes a in nationwide investor awareness program investor uh, awareness program and it di disseminate the information on mutual fund industry so it disseminate the information of mutual fund industry go to the official website of mv you are going to find a lot of useful information a lot of data on mv's website right so in event of a breach of code of conduct by an intermediary uh for example after clearing an I, uh, nism 5a exam after getting the air and card if there is a you know a breach of code of conduct by an intermediary uh what the mv is going to do it, it is going to uh, write and write the intermediary enclosing the copies of the complaint and other document and ask for the explanation within three weeks it will send a notice and it will ask for a explanation within three weeks and in case uh, the explanation is not received within three weeks and in uh, or if the explanation is not a satisfactory the mv will issue a warning letter okay it will issue a warning letter so in the first breach or if it uh, the mv is not satisfied it will issue a warning letter and if repeated mistakes repeated breaches are committed by the member it will result in cancellation of MV registration. It will result in cancellation of MV registration. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and this cancellation of membership, this notification, this intimation will be sent to all the AMCs. Okay. Although the intermediaries, uh, they uh, they have a right to appeal to MV. Okay. Uh, what is the ARN number? So students, after uh, this, uh, after a distributor. Uh, after a distributor or an advisor uh, he uh, appear for a nism 5a exam so he need to register he need to apply for arn card how he can do this he need he needs to go to the official website of mfi <laughs> arn is a unique number assigned to the mutual fund agent so this is arn is a unique number assigned to the mutual fund agent distributor or broker so only those who clear the NISM certification and NISM 5A distributor exam, uh, you can get that. But if you are a senior citizen, uh, passing the CPE is mandatory for the same. But if you are a senior citizen, you, uh, if you clear the CPE, if you, if you have passed the CPE, continuing professional education, then you can get that. So without this number, you cannot sell the mutual fund or you cannot even recommend one. You cannot sell a mutual fund if you do not have a ARN card. Okay. So the MV issues the ARN card to the company's individual engaged in the mutual fund trading and the NISM certification is valid for the three years only. It will valid for three years period only. After that, uh, uh, either you cry, you need to appear for the exam again or you pass the CEP. I mean, there is a set of hours. Okay. How to register? <coughs> for the ARN, uh, for getting the ARN card, you need to link your Aadhaar card to the registered mob registered mobile number. That's important for the examination point of view as well. Link your Aadhaar Aadhaar card to the registered mobile number. In case you have not submitted the Aadhaar, uh, you need to apply manually, right? Pay the fees, and there is no need to uh, upload your uh, you know certificate or anything. Uh, the NISM certificate will be uh, you know it will be verified directly by the CAMS. Okay. So once the document are verified, you will get the ARN license instantly. So that's I think all for today's students. Uh, if there is any doubt in your mind, you can ask your questions in the discussion board. So thank you and have a very nice day. Bye.